today I wanted to talk about my beginner bow setup, uh, why I selected this model, the accessories I have with it, some of the specs about this specific model right here, what I plan to do with this in the future, and why I chose to go this route. Just a quick disclaimer guys, before we get into the heart of the video, I gotta let you guys know I am a beginner archer, a beginner bow hunter, so everything I say I am saying because I've done my own research and I've come up with my own conclusions on why I selected this setup right here and just give you the reasonings and the background, what's going on in my head and all that good stuff. But without further ado, let's go right into the bow itself. So what you see right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a new Matthews V3. This is a brand new model for 2021. And more specifically, this is the Matthews V3 27. Now for you guys that don't know what the 27 means, it means from axle to axle, it is 27 inches. And some of you guys that are watching the video probably have a lot of experience with bow hunting or archery in general. Know that 27 inches axle to axle, or which, what they like to say ATA, is actually very short. But I chose a 27 inch because I wanted something that's compact, something light, very agile, movable, because I plan to spot and stock hogs, possibly deer in the future, maybe even along the lines in the future elk. Hopefully, we'll see, we'll see about that, but something that's agile that won't get caught up and gives me a lot of room, especially if maybe if I'm in a tree stand or off a saddle and I have plenty of clearance to use and not get snagged up with limbs. So 27 inch axle to axle was perfect in my opinion. This Matthews V3 model, you can get in different color palettes. So there's solid colors that are offered like black, green, I believe gray too, if I'm not mistaken. Plus they all have different camouflage patterns. I have a Sitka camouflage pattern. They have the Under Armour. Also, I believe they have the Kuyu and the Realtree. It has a six inch brace height right there, which makes it really forgiving. The weight of this bow straight from the factory is 4.29 pounds, but obviously this is gonna weigh a little bit more because I have all the accessories attached to it. I would imagine right now this weighs probably about five and a half, maybe close to six pounds with everything attached to it. The IBO rating from the factory is 342 feet per second, which is a very, very quick moving arrow from a small package like this. The draw weight on this bow from the factory, you can set it anywhere from 50, I believe, all the way to 75 pounds. It's easily adjustable by just getting a hex wrench and adjusting it from the limbs on both sides right there. Currently, I have this at 65 pounds. The let off on this bow is 85%. I believe you can go down to 75 to 80%. I'm not quite, don't, don't quote me on that, but 85% with a six inch brace height makes this one of the most forgiving models out in the market today. And the last spec I wanted to give you guys is the draw length. Right now I have this draw length at 27 and a half inches. MSRP of the bow itself without all the accessories is $1,199. But once you get all the accessories attached to it and everything else that you want like arrows, that, that'll quickly add up, I'm gonna be frank with you. Let me show you some of the accessories I actually added on to this bow. Let's go and start off and talk about the sight pin itself. I decided on the Axle Vision 5 pin as you see right here. And the reason why I chose this model after a lot of research is because the Axle Vision 5 pin, it's been on the market for a while, but it's a very durable, very sturdy, very customizable and adjustable pin that you can use to sight when you're shooting at a target. And I really love the way it looks. And this is a 5 pin, like I said, as you can see right here, has a bubbler level, the five pins, I already have it sighted, starting from 20, 30, working all the way down. And I have the lighted model, hopefully you can see that. That lights up just like that, so I can shoot in the dark if I need to. Next, let's talk about the rest. What I opted for is the Matthews QAD MX model, as you see right here. Reason why I went with this model is because, once again, I did my research, and this is one of the better rests that you can get on a bow in the market today. I mean, it is quite expensive, I'm not going to lie to you, but it is very, very nice, very durable, and it's very smooth. I mean, it's when the arrow just flies off the bow itself from the rest, I mean, it's really nice. Now, to be frank, guys, there's going to be a lot of accessories out in the market today that are much lower price, just budget-friendlier, but from my own research and just talking to some of the guys on the forums, like the more experienced guys, they say, spend more money on your accessories because you can actually transfer your accessories to your different bow if you decide to you know, go with a different model in the future and they last and they're just so good quality and you know, don't skimp out on your accessories. Pretty much that's the bottom line that I got 
from those experienced guys. For the stabilizer, I chose a Matthew 6 inch stabilizer. It comes with a dampener right here. I wanted to keep it short, not too long, where it's going to add weight, but I felt like this was a good buy. I also have the shoe dis uh, connect right here that had that's holding the stabilizer. So really, really happy with this decision. And for my release, I chose the True Ball Beast number two because I heard a lot of good things about it. Really, really, really nice little release here. But although I probably will upgrade in the future. I wanted to have one of those finger molded releases that Ultraview has. I actually had that on order, so I'm just waiting for them to restock it. But uh, for the time being, this has been a really nice first time setup using a release like this. For the quiver, I decided to stick with Matthews. This is the Matthews Six Arrows quiver. It fits really nicely on the bow. I mean, it's, it's like it's made for it. I mean, it's really nice, really lightweight. I got in the same camouflage pattern as I have on my uh, bow setup right here. And it you know comes with this connection right here where you can put on left or right handed slips right in holds it in place really nice has some dampeners too let me show you right here there's some dampeners right there to help soften the vibration but overall really nice quiver setup that i'm pretty happy with for the arrows itself i decided to go with the black eagle rampage and i did want to get the easton axes but my bow shop my archery shop that i go to did not carry the axis elite so therefore I settled with the Rampage and honestly I'm not too disappointed in these arrows itself. It's very straight. These are 350 spine rating which means it's, it's pretty stiff. And it's, it actually works out perfectly with my 65 pound pull. So now that you got the load down on my beginner bow setup, you're probably going to be wondering why did I select this model specifically? Why did I go with the Matthews? Why did I go with Hoyt? Why didn't, why didn't I go with Bowtech or any other great brands that are out there? Well, the reason why I went with the Matthews because after doing a lot of research online and watching YouTube videos, Matthews is a really, really good company that makes great, great bows. Everything made in the USA. Um, they stand behind the products. They take a lot of pride. They do a lot of engineering. They, they do a lot of field tests too. And a lot of the pro guys and guys that you watch on YouTube and that do bow hunting also recommend Matthews. Now, to say at least, they might be being paid by Matthews, but I don't know. But I did get to pull on the Hoyt, I did get to pull on the Bowtech. Bowtech's actually really nice too. And the Matthews felt really good in my hand. Although that's 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 a lot to say because this is my first bow ever and I am a beginner, so take that with a grain of salt. If you're a beginner archer like I am and you're looking to get into bow hunting, I do highly, highly recommend you visit your local archery shop. Let those guys that work at the archery shop that have many years experience to help you select the right bow for you because they're gonna take your measurements, they're gonna take you know everything in account what your goals are what you're looking for uh, whether you want to shoot just for target for fun you want to use for bow hunting they're going to take all that into consideration and help you select the right bow setup for you and that's what i did exactly so after doing a lot of research and kind of honing down on the accessories and the brands i wanted to look at i went to a local archery shop and they set me up really nice and I'm really happy. I would do it, if I had to do it all over again, I would do it exact same route. I wouldn't do anything different. So super happy with this setup right here. And hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to kill an animal soon. Well, there you go, guys. That's pretty much everything in a nutshell. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll be, I'll be more than happy to answer you. That's gonna be it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys on the next one.